Hi, Justin here. I'm an active duty 68 Whiskey Medic. In this video, we will be teaching you how to perform one person drags and carries, rapidly moving a conscious or unconscious casualty from a point of injury to a covered position or a position of safety without causing further harm to our casualty is a critical step in TC3. While the kit or arm drag may be a means of dragging a casualty to cover or safety, it is not always efficient for longer distances and may increase the chance of causing further harm to our casualty. Use only when hostile fire gives the rescuer no other option. Grab the casualty by their equipment, a drag handle, a strap, or their arm. Some body armor is equipped with a drag handle. Make sure that the equipment is fully strapped and secured onto the casualty. While walking backwards in quick short bursts, drag the casualty towards cover. Injury can occur to either the rescuer or the casualty during training drills. Keep safety in mind. The neck drag is useful in combat because it minimizes the casualty and rescuer's exposure to enemy fire. Hold or tie the casualty's hands together at the wrists. A conscious casualty may clasp their hands together around the bearer's neck. This may be time consuming if the casualty is unconscious and cannot hold their hands together. In this case, tie or strap the casualty's hands together to keep them around the rescuer's neck. Straddle the casualty in a kneeling face-to-face -face position. Loop the casualty's tied hands over your neck. Crawl forward, dragging the casualty with you. Keep the casualty on their back. This can be tiring for the first responder if the patient is heavy or wearing a lot of gear. This method cannot be used if the casualty has a serious arm injury or amputation. If the casualty is unconscious, their head must be protected from the ground. The cradle drop drag is effective in moving a casualty up or down stairs, steps, or short distances. Kneel at the casualty's head with the casualty lying on their back. Slide your hands with palms up under the casualty's shoulders and get a firm hold under their armpits. Rise partially, supporting the casualty's head on one of your forearms. You may bring your elbows together and let the casualty's head rest on both of your forearms. Rise and drag the casualty backwards. The casualty is in a semi-sitting position. All right, now we're gonna discuss the pack strap carry. In the pack strap carry, the casualty's weight rests high on the rescuer's back. This makes it easier for you to carry the casualty a moderate distance, up to 50 to 300 meters. To eliminate the possibility of injury to the casualty's arms, hold the arms in a natural position around your neck. To start, squat in front of the casualty, facing in the same direction. Have the casualty wrap their arms around your neck. It is best if one of the casualty's arms is routed under one of the rescuer's arms and up towards the neck. Lift the casualty from the ground to a standing position using your leg muscles. Grasp the casualty's wrist and ensure their arm is over your shoulder. Bend forward and raise or hoist the casualty as high on your back as possible so that the casualty's weight is resting on your back. Once the casualty is positioned on your back, remain as erect as possible to prevent straining or injuring your back. Next is the support carry. This procedure should be used for a conscious casualty only. Assist the casualty from the ground to a standing position. With your dominant hand, grasp the casualty's corresponding wrist and draw it around behind your neck. Place your other arm around the casualty's waist, grabbing the casualty's belt or clothing where the belt loop is positioned. While using yourself as a crutch, walk with the casualty.